Hey everybody, it's Captain Kyle and I have the new Legacy Evolution Evo Fusion bombshell. Yes, he uh, sold that on Hasbro Pulse super fast, but I was able to get him through another source. It looks pretty cool. But this is a versus review. Not only that, I haven't done a triple one in a while, so I'm gonna compare this guy to the Combiner Wars version of Bombshell. Who well, he doesn't come with a weapon. And the G1 Bombshell. So pretty much all the Bombshells that actually uh, transform. I mean, Grio doesn't count. The Action Master, while cool, I don't have many more, so. And then there's like the really big one that I have in the other room, but he doesn't transform. So we're just gonna do the transforming ones and do a quick versus. So we'll put up Legacy against Combiner Wars against G1 and see which one is better. And you let me know in the comments what you think. All right, let's get to this. Be right back. All right, so we might as well start out with the brand new one. So the one from Legacy, I'm gonna get out my trusty knife and we're gonna open this fucker with precision and care. And then we're gonna yank him out because we don't give a shit. Don't need that. I might, is the Evo Fusion thing. They never actually explain it. All right, there he is. Now this guy has plastic. We're back to plastic. So I grabbed the box anyway because I wanted to see, does it say plastic free packaging? And no, it doesn't seem to say plastic free. There's that, but we're still not getting windows. We are still getting shitty pieces of paper. But let us continue taking this guy out. As you can see, he's got the uh, tissue paper accessories. Yeah, I've given up all hope on it being anything other than accessories. Oh, wait, it's a Gelden ticket. No, this is not Willy Wonka. All right. So in here, we have two guns. And from the packaging, it looks like they attach to his arms. And his gun, which is reminiscent of his G1 gun will actually be able to compare. Yay. Now to make a mess on my table because of these plastic things. Easier to snap through, but yeah, it makes a mess. He's restrained in here well. I don't know if they expect that he might, I don't know, if let loose, actually shoot a Cerebro shell into someone's head and then start uh, commanding them to do stuff. Oop, one more. No, he didn't shoot me with a Cerebro shell. That would be weird. I don't know if they would work on humans, but there's a lot of these plastic pieces of shit, which again, easier to get out, so I don't mind that so much, but I don't miss the mess. Definitely don't need that. So there he is in his robot mode as he came packaged in. We can put a gun in his hand. Uh, that might be dangerous. And there are a couple things that you can do apparently with these guns. You can put them on the side of his main gun so it becomes a more powerful weapon. Or it looks like, according to the box, but not the instructions oddly, that you can attach them underneath his arms so they could be underarm cannons or tanfas, kind of. Tanfas usually hold by the handle or they could be some kind of melee weapon. But there he is in a different configuration with his gun, ta-da. He looks good so far. Um, let's check out the robot mode for some posability. And then before we get into the other mode, we're gonna look at the other guys in their robot modes. So full Jean Clint Van Damme, easy peasy. He does have these little spikes on the back of his legs so that it kind of makes him wobble a bit backwards. So he flops backwards. But looking at the legs we do have, do we have ankle swivels? We do. So you can set him into a firm, wide stance, just like in karate class. The legs can go forward and they can go back. They can go off to the side. They bend at the knee. He was a little stiff, ah, but there we go. Bends at the knee. It also has a swivel, so that's nice. So great leg articulation. It looks like, yes, he does twist at the waist. So again, great ability to put him in some very dynamic poses. The arms go all the way around. Woo! They uh, bend at the elbow, they swivel. They have these extra holes for uh, weapons. The fists don't twist. Because it looks like they fold in, so the transformation does not allow that. Now I can see here, I can probably push back and 
take out his arm, but I don't want to do that. It feels like it's in there pretty good, though, so it might be harder to do than I thought. The head, well, it does turn. This Cerebro Shell Launcher is actually attached to it, so he can't turn too far unless you move it up, and then even then, no. It, he has a limited range of head motion, but you don't have to, like, grab his head to do it. You can just use this gun. So, not bad. There's his back. Not too much kibble. Now, the one thing I'm not that happy about is this gun is pointed skyward, and it can't really point forward unless you're covering his eyes, pretty much. So, well, you can go pretty close. That doesn't cover his eyes. So, I guess you could have him like that, so the gun's pointed a little bit more forward, but... And it does articulate back and forth. That is the final piece of articulation. Well, you can kind of move his shoulders back. That's part of the transformation, but you can kind of have him move his shoulders back. Yeah, I like him so far. Very cool. We got to put him up against the original, which is right here. This is the G1. Now, the G1, very common piece. I almost bought an extra one because I couldn't find this for a while, but then I found him and reunited him with his two uh, Insecticon G1 brethren. There was one guy who wanted like an obnoxious amount of money for this. I can see sealed in box, but uh, these guys are pretty common. Even now you can get a G1 version pretty cheap, though they have tons of reissues. So let's quickly just take his gun off and compare it to the new gun, so I don't forget. They, it is reminiscent, but you can definitely see some differences. It does have the two projections, but on these, they are longer than the main barrel. On this one, it's obviously not. So it's a slight bit of an homage. It may be more accurate. It's been a while since I've seen what his gun looked like in the cartoon. And uh, I definitely saw shrapnels uh, fade into existence from subspace. So it's kind of a little bit of an homage, but the guns are definitely different. But posability on the original. Now, his legs, there are no ankle swivels, but his legs can go forward a little bit. They can go back very little bit. So, but more articulation than a lot of G1s. His arms can go all the way around. You can kind of push back on his shoulder there. Sorry, I was covering your face for a moment there. But no elbow joint, so it's pretty much straight armed. The head is set in there. That's not turning. And you can articulate the gun if you wanted to like put it out of sight for some reason. And then surprise, I'm gonna put a Cerebro shell in your head. You know, as we all surprise our friends with Cerebro shells, it's a pretty common practice on my planet. So he's cool. If you look at the back, there's not too much kibble. You can't really tell that he's an insect, except for the, uh, the arms slash about to be legs type things. So there he is. All right, one more robot mode, and then we're on to uh, the three comparison and then on to the uh, insect modes. So this is the uh, Combiner Wars version, a basic core class, whatever you want to call them nowadays. And he does not have ankle rockers, but he does have a good amount of posability. You can put him in pretty much a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. He bends at the knee. You got to be careful because he's got this leg for his insect mode there and that can get in the way. He's also got this little post here that moves back and forth. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be knee guns because he doesn't have any other guns except for this. But bends a bit at the knee. Um, out to the side, it does swivel. So very good. And it twists at the upper waist. So again, for some dynamic posing. And the arm goes all the way around and he bends and it swivels because there's a ball joint there. So that's pretty good for the Combiner Wars version. The head like the G1 does not move. But like the other ones, you can articulate the gun in different directions as well. I mean, it is a good version. I don't like the fact that, uh, like the new one, this is pointed up and you can't even really, unless you basically cover his entire face, he can't fire forward. So it def definitely goes up at an angle. Shoulders go back. But overall, pretty cool. He has a little bit more kibble on the back because you can see the insect legs there, as well as the ones on his arms. But a cool version. Now, side by side, this one happens to be the smallest of them all. So even in the G1 days, the 
Insecticons were smaller than a lot of the Autobots, or just barely as tall as the deluxe versions, um, and obviously taller than and bigger than the basic size, or the mini cars as they were called, or the mini cassettes as well. But as you can see, the G11 is slightly taller, uh, just about slightly bigger than the Combiner Wars one, but definitely dwarfed by the new Legacy Evolution. But they are a very cool set, and I'm not giving these guys up. And you can see back kibble, there's not too much on these two, a little bit more on the Combiner Wars, but they're still all cool figures. And when it comes to posability, Legacy beats out a little bit of the Combiner Wars one, but they both make the uh, G1 look pretty stiff. All right, let's get them into insect modes. So let's start with Legacy Evolution. And I'm gonna pop off his weapons and I'm gonna actually refer to the instructions. I, I have an idea, but uh, I don't like breaking shit. So I'm gonna look at the instructions as well as I can to see if I can uh, get him very quickly into his insect mode. So far though, I like the fact that things pop into place. That's kind of nice. Now the reason he twists at the waist, or at least an additional reason it, besides the posability is because that is part of the transformation. And I'm gonna say that the transformation is pretty clever. It's not as simplistic as you may have thought. And again, one of the things I like about the new Legacy ones are the ability for these guys to plug in like there's little notches for things to plug in, so they're very solid. So there he is in his insect mode. Now, it, like I said, very solid. Um, these are the front legs, I guess. These are the middle legs here, and then these are the back legs. Not a ton of articulation, doesn't look, but it's a mechanical beetle. Um, gun storage is in either one of these holes on the back here. I wish I'd given him an extra gun. I really prefer to have you know, either symmetrical weapons or something centered, but there's no way to actually center this gun. I'm just noticing now he's got this plate here. I think it's reminiscent of the plate that opens on the original G1, but I don't think it opens, but we'll find out because it actually looks like it has something going through it. So we'll play. There's nothing in the instructions about opening up that chest piece. So, but there he is. And, you know, shoots Cerebro shells. Was not bashed by Hot Rod and Cup during the movie. I mean, he certainly got his share of damage, but not in that particular scene when they were their way in. My Cerebro shell. So one of his weaknesses, apparently, if you, you capture one of his Cerebro shells and damage it, you can actually cause him some problems. I didn't really point out he's got the nice subgun symbol on the chest. He's got some nice highlights here. This little stripe on the side. And we'll see how that compares to the G1 in a moment, but pretty solid. It's a mechanical beetle, so a little thicker. Looks a little bit more like a sled with a gun on it, but still can't beat the robot mode in. Pretty cool. All right, G1. So G1, he's got his gun. We're gonna pop that out. His transformation, super simple. Things pop into place and there is no gun storage. So you just put the gun aside or into subspace. And there he is. He's got his nice rub sign there. This does open. I would have to reopen up the legs, but that does open. We're gonna transform you back but just to test that out. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of it, sorry. I don't want to have to do another apology video. But this is in very good shape for, you know, being an actual G1. They have wheels, but there he is. He can fire in different configurations. He looks a little more insect-like. I mean, he's got his arms are all three legs. So you got your front legs here, middle legs and rear legs. And so looking at these guns and these guns, that are like his extra weapons in his uh, insect mode or in his robot mode. It's actually closer than I initially thought, but 
very cool G1 and uh, not a lot of kibble on the bottom, but it's still a mechanical box. All right, so here we are with the Combiner Wars one and the plastic on this doesn't feel as quality as Legacy. I don't know what's going on there. And I haven't transformed this in a long time, so, but it seems pretty simple. So there he is in his, tried to get me. There he is in his insect mode. And he's got these two little tail things. I don't know if they're supposed to fold down or if they stick out and just shoot shit out, but those are there. Again, he's got his uh, Cerebro shell gun in the front there. This one is a little more insect-like, in my opinion, just because of the legs. Those legs are much more of a uh, insect feel, you know, when he's crawling around. So I gotta say, despite the plastic feeling a little rubbery, almost, compared to the uh, Legacy, they did a good job on this guy. Not happy with the fact that he doesn't have a gun, but he's got a nice Decepticon symbol. All right, let's compare all three, because I do like this one. I like them all, because that they're in my collection. All right, so the Legacy one, to the tip of his gun, is like five and a half inches long. The G1 is like four and three quarters, and the Combiner Wars one, if you have those little things sticking out, it's like four and a half. So definitely different sizes. Yeah, he's like five. I don't know if I said five and a half or not, but five inches, four and a half. Not a huge disparity in size between these two. This one's obviously a bit bigger. Now looking at them side by side, you can see now the Legacy has a stripe here. This one had a nice sticker here. Well, it used to be nice. It looks nicer on the other side, but that is an homage to that little detail, which is nice. And the way the arms are between the Legacy and the G1, very similar as far as a look there. In fact, they're all like that. So that's kind of nice. He doesn't, this Combiner Wars one doesn't have the stripe, but it has red back here. So again, it's nice with going with consistent deco. Facing the Combiner Wars ones head on, you have that little red there, which is not present on the Legacy, but is reminiscent of the G1 stickers that are on the bottom of his feet. So that is nice job with the uh, Combiner Wars one. So there is definitely the size difference. The G1 has a very chromed gun. I imagine that the one that's gonna come for the Transformers the movie is not gonna be chromed. It'd be more like this one, which is just gray plastic. Whereas the Legacy one is gray plastic, but it's shinier. It's got a gloss to it. I'm gonna take off this gun just because it looks weird that he's the only one who's like flaunting his gun. Uh, the Combiner Wars one is a little more posable. If you move his legs down, he can be more like rearing up. He is uh, some type of like rhino beetle, I believe. So, and you can move the front legs a little bit. So a little more posability on that one. This one, I mean, you can move the legs down and they can be rearing up. This one, uh, no, it's G1, unless you wanna try, but no, in that configuration, you can't. So that's kind of a neat thing that you can make him rear up as well, but it kind of hides his middle leg or stump. That's the rear view on all of them. Again, I'm not sure if these are supposed to be out or if they're supposed to be folded under. I mean, folded under makes it look a little more rounded. I kind of like them sticking out. It's like he's got two poop shoots. There you go. You can shit twice as much. But overall, um, I think they all have pluses and minuses. The G1 has super nostalgia value and chrome and more die-cast metal, but I think it's uh, a way to build up your Insecticon army without having all the same toy. Right, so the one final thing that I'm gonna do, I am going to transform, well, I'm transforming all of them back, but I'm definitely transforming back the Legacy because I just wanna make sure I don't think it opens but I want to double check. And definitely this bombshell as far as in proportion to Autobots of his line, much, much more imposing, much more of a Decepticon. There is a pin through here. I can see it through the clear plastic, but I'm not seeing a way to open this. So unless I will quickly re-examine the instructions, but I don't see anything about, I don't recall seeing anything about opening that. 
So it may just be a nice design element as an homage, again, to the original opening up. Nope, nothing. And the packaging doesn't show anything. I do find it interesting that uh, you can refer to the packaging for more information about the uh, Evo Fusion, but it's usually, it's not always in the instructions. At least that's what I found so far. I kind of like the guns on the bottom of his arms though, because that is kind of reminiscent of the G1 guns right here. So there you have it, a triple versus review. Three choices. Which one do you like the best? Or are there elements of all of them that you like? Oh, before I go too far, I do have a little guest star here. Uh, Salvo, I think is his name. This is one of the Decepticon clones, the E-Hobby exclusive. I would not be surprised if we saw a legacy version or maybe a legacy three pack of all the Insecticons in their E-Hobby colors because they've been doing a lot of E-Hobbies. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I would buy that set. This is a cool eHobby exclusive set and having them with a new articulation would be great. So while you're mulling these guys over, telling me which one you like best, and there are links in the description to get all these guys. I'll even put links to this set. Check out this video over here where it is the G1 kickback versus the G1 retro reissue Transformers movie version. That can put your eye out. We'll see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting.